I'll be reading comic and Inuit puppy story. If you've got this book, go get it so you can read along with me. Story time with Galicia. Comic and Inuit puppy story adapted from the memories of Donald Uluadwuk, illustrated by Quinn Lang. There's many beautiful language words in here, and I'm going to do my best to pronounce them. But the best way to hear these words would be from a speaker. Adatsia, are you home? Jake called as he walked into his grandfather's kitchen. He kicked his snowy boots onto the rubber mat and left the door open for Comic, his puppy, to come inside the house. Hello? Jake's grandfather called from the sitting room. Come on in, but close the door. It's cold. Jake turned to look for Comic in the doorway, but all he saw of the little dog was his tail scampering back down the steps and around the side of the house. Comic! Get back here! Jake called after his dog. He never listens to me, Adatsak. Jake hopped down the steps in his socks and pulled Comic from under the porch. Back inside the house, Comic squirmed and wiggled, trying to get out of Jake's arms. Stop it! Stay! Jake said sternly, but Comic finally freed himself and ran through the kitchen, leaving little wet paw prints on the floor. Comic, come! Jake's commands were of no use. Comic ran around the sitting room in circles until he finally came to rest in a warm spot next to Jake's grandfather's feet. He's certainly full of energy, Jake's grandfather said with a laugh. He never listens, no matter how loud I yell. I called him Comic because his fur looks like he's wearing a boot. I should have called him Bad Dog. Jake's grandfather looked down at the restless puppy that was gently chewing on the base of his armchair. When I was raising dogs, we used to name our puppies after older dogs who had passed away. I named my puppies after strong dogs my grandfather used in his dog teams. Some of the names had been passed down since before I was born. Your grandmother was a great dog trainer, Jake. She and the other women from our camp helped raise many good dogs. I remember my own grandmother speaking to the puppies as she stretched their muscles, telling them to be strong, ambitious, and obedient to their masters. Dogs can understand more of what we say than you can imagine. Your grandmother loved her dogs. She raised them in a similar way to raising a child. In order to train a good dog, you have to build trust with the dog living with it every day and teaching it through how you behave and how you treat it. I spent a lot of time with my dogs. It was more like building a good friendship than raising an animal. Eventually, they start to understand you, and you start to understand them. When you train a dog well, he can become a very reliable and dependable helper. I relied on my dogs all the time when I traveled with them out on the land. Jake smiled at the thought of traveling by dog teams across the tundra. It would be a lot faster than riding his old hand-me-down bike. I can't wait to take out my own dog team, Jake exclaimed. I'm going to outrun all my friends with my super-fast dogs. Jake ran around the room pretending to race his kamutik across the land. Comic barked. Jake's grandfather smiled. When I hunted by dog team, my dogs were my constant helpers. Once I got caught in a terrible blizzard, the weather was so bad that I couldn't even see the dogs in front of the kamutik. But I knew that once a dog has taken a trail, he knows that trail and will never get lost. So I trusted my dogs to find their way home. When the dogs suddenly stopped, I ran to them to see what was the matter. They had stopped because we were home. We were right in front of our own porch. If I had been alone, I would have never made it home. Dogs can also sense danger that people cannot see. They can warn us about thin ice and the presence of dangerous animals. My dogs once even saved my life by waking me when a fire broke out in my camp at night. Well-trained dogs can help their masters all year long. In the summer, my dogs would help me pull out tent poles that were stuck deep in the earth. Once when I didn't have a motor for my boat, I tied my dogs to the boat with long ropes and they ran along the shore pulling my boat through the water just as if I had a motor. 
For 10 years, I hunted by dog team, and my dogs helped me the entire time. They found foxholes for me and could smell and hear caribou much better than any person could. When the hunt was over and we were on our way home, even though the dogs were tired from long days of watching for danger and pulling my sled, they always seemed happier than ever to be returning to camp. They pulled faster and ran harder on the way home. I think it was because they knew they would be returning to your grandmother and other women who cared about them and had loved them from the time they were puppies, even smaller than Comic here. Comic had drifted off to sleep in a patch of sunlight at Jake's grandfather's feet. Jake looked at his big puppy paws and wondered how long it would be before he was strong enough and smart enough to be a sled dog. Jake! Jake's mom called him to the front door. It's time to come home for supper. Jake got up and thanked his grandfather for telling him about his dogs. He moved to the other side of the room and called Comic to follow him. Comic didn't move. Jake called three more times, but Comic stayed put. I don't think he wants to go, Jake's grandfather said with a chuckle. Jake let out an exhausted sigh <sighs> and ran over to pick up Comic and then take him home. Just before leaving the room, Jake turned to look at his grandfather. A da, da sec. What did you call your lead dog when you had a dog team? Her name was Tuhaji, Jake's grandfather replied. She was a very smart dog. As Jake left the room, his grandfather heard him whisper to his puppy, Come on, Tuhaji, you and I are going to need to spend a lot more time together from now on. Yawanko, thank you for listening. Onogiwa! If you enjoyed this video, push the like button and don't forget to subscribe.